Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Which one should you do? Should you set the plane on its sole or on its side? Today we're actually going to do some testing and really find out which is better. This is an argument that is as old as YouTube and probably even older. If you ever see a YouTube video with someone using a plane and they set it down, you're going to have someone saying, oh, you shouldn't set it on its sole or oh, you shouldn't set it on its side. Um, which one is correct? And there have been several videos about this, but today I actually want to do some tests to find out which one is actually correct. If you want to hear a clear explanation about why you should set it on its sole or its side or the history of the argument or more that goes into the, the ramifications of it, I'd say go take a look at Paul Sellers. He has a video that is incredibly well done that goes into the history of the argument and some of the reasons and pros and cons for it. Um, uh, that's a phenomenal video. So I'm not going to go into all that detail. I actually want to do the testing of which one is better. The problem with testing it is, theoretically, if you leave it on its side, nothing is hurting the iron at the time, uh, unless some tool happens to come by it. So we're going to kind of put it, putting it on its side as the control and setting it down to see how much damage actually comes to the plane every time you set it down. I know immediately people are going to start jumping on it saying that leaving it on its side doesn't guarantee no damage. Uh, it does actually leave it open to damage. Tools might come by and, oh no, hit the iron, or your hand might come by and uh, remove a little bit of flesh. So it is not inherently safe, but if kept careful, nothing is touching it and therefore it should stay at zero. But if you put it down on its sole, well, now you've pretty much guaranteed your hand isn't going to hit it and other tools aren't going to hit it. So significant damage isn't going to happen with the sole down. But does repeatedly putting it down on the iron actually cause the iron to dull? I've never seen a video of anyone actually testing that. So that's what we're going to do. So here's the rig we use. Uh, this is actually designed to test how sharp an edge is and you can get a specific number to the sharpness of the edge. The nice thing about this is there is a finely calibrated filament that runs across between these two fences. That is then set on an incredibly sensitive scale. Then you take the iron and you slice the filament and it sees how much pressure does it actually take to slice that filament. It is probably one of the most accurate ways of measuring actual sharpness. So with this, we can test it after we sharpened it, and then after we set it down a few times, we can test it again and see how much damage was caused in between the two. For the plane, we're going to use the worst case scenario. We have a really thick iron, a really thick chip breaker, making this as heavy as we can, and oh, look at that. We put a brass knob on the front of this thing. We want to make this as heavy as possible, so when it goes into the bench, it goes into the bench with a lot of force. So if this damages it, then there's a reason to it. If this doesn't damage it, then an average plane won't. And uh, yes, brass knobs, uh, they're something coming from reed planes in the future. This is a, uh, a prototype that I'm playing with. So let's get into it and sharpen this up. Spritzy, coarse, medium, fine. Stropations, test, test. 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 So I need to give you a little bit of context about what the numbers mean. If you get down to about 75, 80, that is about as sharp as you can possibly make steel. It just doesn't get any sharper than that. That's the molecular size required. Uh, for most steels out there. So 75, 80, yeah, you're not going to get any sharper than that. Usually after a few dozen strokes in a decent wood, no matter how good the iron is, it's probably going to end up somewhere around 130 to 140. That is what I consider to be sharp. 130 to 140 is a really good plane. You can do a lot of great finishing with that. Yes, technically you can get a little bit sharper, but that edge is not going to last no matter how you do it. Um, you're always going to go back to about 130, 140. And that's still extremely sharp. For most operations, up until it gets up to around 400, I consider it to be a sharp iron. Uh, around 400 is when it's not going to be able to do smoothing, it's not going to do difficult grains, uh, you're not going to be able to do a lot of the work you want. After 400, you're going to have to take it back and sharpen it. Before 400, you can probably just strop it and be good. Um, so 400 is kind of that butter zone. 500 is the point where most all of my planes, I'm going to resharpen it. At that point, it, it won't do much of anything. Uh, 600, 
I might let my scrub plane get that far, but eh, not so much. 700 is what your average kitchen knife is for the average person who doesn't actually know what sharp is. Anything over 800 is a screwdriver. These numbers are a little bit confusing to you. I'm going to leave a link to the previous plane iron test. I did a test comparing a whole pile of different irons and how durable they are, how sharpenable they are. Um, and I'll leave a link to that down below as well um, as the spreadsheet for all of this. So you can actually see real world ramifications of what do these numbers mean in actual sharpness and how long does it take for this iron to get dull because this is the exact iron I tested in that test. So if you want to see that, I'll leave links to that down below. So here's my prediction. I'm going to set this plane down a hundred times. Iron will be set up just like it would be for an average shaving. And then I'm going to test it again. I'm expecting it to be somewhere around 140. In other words, I've taken a few shavings on the plane already. But if it's more than 400, then uh, we have an issue. If it's more than 500, then yeah, I'm always going to be putting this on its side. So let's see where it ends up. Our shaving here is about two thousandth of an inch. Our shaving is about two thousandths of an inch, pretty average shaving. So, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I'm not putting it down very lightly. Let's keep going. Twelve, thirteen. Ninety-two, ninety-three, ninety-four, ninety-five, ninety-six, seven, ninety-eight, 99, 100. And here's what the bench looks like after that. You can see all the spots where the iron has landed in the bench over 100 times. And now for the all important numbers, let's test. Test number two. Number three. Number four. And number five. So there's one test, but one test does not a spreadsheet make. And I want a spreadsheet. So I'm going to do this whole test again several more times. I don't need to record it because that gets boring really fast. And also I'm going to leave it on my bench overnight and see how that goes. And uh, we'll see what the results are. Okay, we've got data, and this, this is the spreadsheet. Welcome to Wood by Write, where we do lots of numbers. So up here we have test one. This is what you watched, uh, though later on I went and I did a thousand set downs. Yeah, um, that is a lot. <laughs> it, it took a little while, um, but I wanted to see, you know, is there a correlation from 1 to 100 or 100 to 200, so I figured 1,000. Uh, and then I repeated the 100 set downs six times. Uh, and then I decided to leave it overnight and just set it on the bench and leave it there and see if overnight pressure on it actually changed anything. Uh, and that is with the, the brass knob on there and all the weight. Um, so for those of you who want to see the specifics on the numbers, I have this chart here that kind of says, what is the difference between 100 and 100? Uh, the biggest, biggest difference is 200 will still cut arm hair. It is really sharp. It is still very, very good for a smoothing plane. It's not 100% sharp um, as you would get with, you know, 100 or less, um, but it's still really, really sharp. Um, 300 is is pretty close. I'm not going to be using it for the really difficult grains, but uh, for most, it is really good. 400, I'm probably going to take it back and sharpen it. But anything 300 and under, um, a strop will fix it. It is not all that far out of sharp. And then for other information, I have this pulled out from the plain iron test. Uh, this is actually testing the specific iron, uh, the Lee Nielsen. And so you can see the numbers from the initial markings. Uh, so when I actually sharpened it on the work sharp, it got it up to about 120 to 130. Uh, and that's what the work sharp could do it. I can get it a little bit sharper by hand. Um, but within 40 passes, it was already into the 200s. So we're going to be seeing the difference between, uh, you know, 120 and 200s. 40 passes in hickory brings it to 200. Just remember that. Let's come back over here to the main numbers. And we can see the, the averages between 0 and 100 is 30 difference. So the average from 100 moves it from a 96 to 127. 127 is only like four or five strokes in the wood. So we can come down here and see the total average is 27.47. After 100 set downs, 100 times of putting the plane down on the bench, which is probably way more than you would ever do in a single sharpening, 
you have a total of 27 that it gets duller. And that is almost negligible. That is just incredibly small. And then we move out here to the 1,000. So the difference between uh, 1,000 and 0 is 58. So an order of magnitude greater gives you twice as much dulling. So in order to dull it as much as it would over 40 strokes would be somewhere around 10,000 times setting it down. 10,000 times setting it down on a white oak bench might get it as dull as 40 strokes in hickory. Uh, and that is, and that's even starting with the work sharp, which are lower, which are, are worse numbers. So yeah, negligible, absolutely negligible difference between setting it down and not. Um, yeah, basically nothing. Oh, and then I decided to set it down overnight because I had one night in between. Um, and so I sharpened it, set it down. The next morning came back and tested it. So basically it's one set down and how much pressure and deformation does it have from its own weight with that brass knob? And it, it actually technically got ever so slightly sharper. Uh, but no, that's well within the, the, the deviation. So there's, there's no change at all um, in leaving it stored on the iron. So... Yeah, um, I think that's pretty conclusive evidence. So as spreadsheets go, this one is um, a bit smaller. But if you want something a little more detailed, I'll leave the plain iron test uh, links down below as well. So you can see links to both of these. So there you have it. A pretty conclusive test that setting it down flat on the sole is not going to make any difference at all. Uh, yeah, technically, by the numbers, it loses a little bit. But honestly, that is about the amount it would use over one or two passes. And in the iron test I did, honestly, those numbers were right about the numbers that the Lee Nielsen had when it first started sharpening, and that was on the work sharp. So I can get a little bit sharper by hand than I can with the work sharp. And yeah, it makes absolutely no difference to set it on its sole. And it's going to protect it from accidental movement of other tools coming past or your hand coming past. So definitively, I'm going to say from here on out, Set the plane on its sole. It's the better of the two methods. Uh, you're not going to hurt anything as long as you don't set it on top of another tool. Uh, you're good. I know that people are going to have lots of other things that they say, well, you didn't do this or oh, you didn't do that, and I might do tests in the future. Uh, but in all honesty, at that point, you're really just getting nitpicky. Um, but I like to get nitpicky from time to time, too. So maybe I will do more if you have something you want me to test. Um, let me know, and we'll, we'll put that in. Um, also, if you want to take a look at the plain iron test I did years ago, um, I have a whole lot more data actually comparing a pile of different irons, and you can see all the numbers in there and how they correlate to this and how much edge was actually taken off of this in the testing. So from here on out, I'm going to conclusively say, put it sole down. You're not going to hurt anything doing that, and you might actually hurt something putting it on its side. So I hope this answered a few questions. I'm sure it started quite a few more. Let me know those down in the comments down below. I do read through all of them and I answer as many as I can get to. And thank you for that. That does mean a lot. Anytime you hit like, comment, share, subscribe, all those things do help us. They keep the channel going and they get us in front of more people. They help the algorithm. Thank you. It is a free way that you can help me out and it means a lot. If you want to take it one step farther and you like this kind of data and research, uh, think about becoming a patron over here. This one really didn't cost me that much, but a lot of the tests I do do actually cost quite a bit and I'm helped out completely by patrons and you, the viewers. So if you like that, become a patron, links to that down below, or you can click the little join button to become a member here on YouTube. We do have special perks for both and some behind the scenes stuff. So thank you for that. On that note, I think I'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. And at this day and age, I do expect people to be marching out in front of my houses with signs doing protests any day now, saying that, no, you really should put it on its side because, um, well, yeah, you know how it goes.